What's going on everybody and welcome back to Tech Cubed and today, well today we are going to be taking a look at a new operating system or an operating system I haven't looked at before. It's a um, variation of Linux um, and what really caught my eye about this operating system is its name. It has a very unique name. And I really haven't heard much about it before, so I want to delve into it today, install it, and see what it's really about, what it has to offer. So, um, this is what it is. It's called Cute Fish OS. Very unique name, like I just said. Um, and apparently, this operating system, um, it's one of the variations of Linux where the idea is it's trying to create a simple desktop experience, something similar to potentially maybe Mac OS or Windows, depending on the exact variation. And then, of course, um, it's built on Linux. It's a Linux distro, so it can do Linux things, which, of course, a Mac or a Windows computer can't do. So take a look at it here. Of course, Cutefish OS, wonderful name. Um, Queer-mindedness, handy for a better uh, experience desktop. Let's focus on simplicity, beauty, and I assume this is supposed to say practicality. So, yeah, that's kind of what I guess this is going for here. It very similar to a lot of other Linux distros, if I'm being honest, a lot of Linux distros do say they're built on simplicity, beauty, practicality, some variation of those words. So, yeah, I mean, some of course are better at it than others, that's what um, I'm also curious about this operating system. Is it actually better? Will it actually run smoothly? Um, especially if we're running it in a virtual machine. So, um, um, it has apparently good design, good attention to detail, um, it respects its users, that, that's always a good thing, right? Some operating systems don't respect their users and that can cause problems. Um, high value, careful design, unprecedented new experience, better user experience, security and stability. Security, very important nowadays, of course stability also very important. Especially if you're doing some important work, you want an operating system that is stable and especially secure. So now looking over here, we have Cutefish OS applications. Um, we developed a series of Cutefish OS applications to ensure that users have a unified UI UX experience in their daily use. So we have what looks to be uh, some sort of camera, a calculator, files application, maybe some sort of scanning tool, I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to be. Uh, terminal, I guess, settings application, like a, probably a store, and then maybe some sort of diagnostic program. Um, it's open source, well, very good. Linux is good at that stuff, of course. Um, it has a nice desktop experience, which is efficient, beautiful, modern. They all say that, so I guess what we really see. A global menu. Qfish OS has a gold menu at the top. It is a collection of all functions of an application, which is very convenient for the integration of apps functions with the system and can save some screen space. All right, so it seems to be um, a very, it seems to be similar to other Linux distros in the fact, of course, it wants to be simple, uh, easy to use, potentially look like another version of uh, and our operating system, like like this one, seems to be uh, based on the design of macOS, for example. But uh, the name is really what drew me to this one, so I am curious to see what it has to offer that's a little more unique, if that makes any sense. So, without further ado, we can go ahead and get this installed into VirtualBox. So, we're gonna bring VirtualBox over here. Let's start a new. I want to do that, a custom folder to save them. Name, I want it to be cute fish OS, of course. Uh, disk image, I have it saved here, right here. Uh, Linux, and let's see. I can go ahead and say the Linux 64 bit. Sure. So let's see. For memory, um, I would think four gigs should be enough. I would hope four gigs would be enough. I am interested in whether to try four gigs or eight gigs. Let's try four gigs. If it's really super simple and it runs really well, it should run well in four gigs. And let's try two uh, cores. 
Let's go ahead and do 32 gigabytes. Yeah, I think that should be good. Finish. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move it up here. So something, of course, I, I want to mention a little off topic, I guess. Um, in the newer version of VirtualBox, the, if you watch some of my older videos, you would know that VirtualBox was never, uh, I guess, this easy to get up and running. You always had to go into the settings, usually come down to storage and put it in here. Um, they've really tried to streamline VirtualBox in some of the newer versions to make it easier for, I guess, novices to get into it, which, eh, you know, good for them, you know? Uh, VirtualBox um, has had some problems in the past uh, for me and a bunch of other people. Um, but, you know, if they're going to make VirtualBox better and easier to use, then go for it. Okay, so now we're loading into KubeFishOS here. Uh, try our install KubeFishOS. Yes, that's what we want to do. Okay, so it seems to be loading up very well here. Okay, so now we have the options to try KubeFishOS or install it. Looks, of course, very similar to a lot of other distros of Linux, if you've uh, had any experience with any distros of Linux in the past. Um, however, we want to do install KubeFish here. Um, yeah, let's go for this English download updates. Sure. Exist and install, definitely. We want to continue because this is a virtual disk with nothing else on it that is dedicated to just KubeFish OS. My name, oh, let's put, go ahead and put my name in here. Use password, I don't need a password, let's just log in automatically. Yeah, I think that should be good, virtual box. Interesting. Let's just go ahead and do VM. All right, that good? Does it need me to do a password? Oh, I guess it does need me to do a password, doesn't it? Interesting. Now let's go ahead and just do a space then. Yeah, I do want to log in automatically though. Okay, so now the installation will begin and I will be right back when it finishes. Okay, we are back. And, well, that took, I feel, an above average amount of time to install. It took about 30 minutes, I want to say, um, to get this whole thing up and running. Because I just restarted it here this first time it's booted. And, yeah, it took about 30 minutes, which um, is a little longer than I feel like a lot of our distros of Linux have taken in the past. But maybe it was installing more software or something along those lines. Um, maybe it's a sign we'll get a better experience potentially, and you know, let's hope for the best, right? So, right off the bat, I do want to make this full screen. So, let's see how we can make that happen here. Full screen mode, switch, and right off the bat, um, it transitioned into full screen really well. That is a really good sign for me. So, now we can really see all that Cutefish OS has to offer. So right off the bat, it does look similar to Mac OS. All right, there's no denying that, but it does not feel as similar as I originally thought it would, like how it did in the pictures when we were first looking at it. I thought it'd be a lot more similar to Mac OS, but it's not. So let's see, um, change background. I wanna see what other backgrounds they have. Okay, so they have some of these in here. Okay. Sure, let's go with, well, let's just go with this one. It's a basic background. Sure, okay, that, that's fine. Um, So it does not feel as similar to Mac OS as I thought it would, honestly. And when I was installing this and when I was looking into it, it became very apparent that this is just a kind of rebadged Ubuntu in a way. Um, now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing because Ubuntu is one of the most popular distros of Linux out there. And for good reason, it's very simple to use, um, provides very good software compatibility for a Linux distro. So if they took, let's say, the winning formula from Ubuntu and built onto it, then maybe that would be a really good thing. So let's take a look around here and see. So, 
launcher. That's that's similar to Mac OS. There's no denying that. So looking at some of the apps here, uh, screenshot. Okay, so it's not a scanner. It's a screenshot because that's what we were looking at earlier online. So let's see, file manager, Firefox. That's a good sign because I'm a Firefox guy. So additional drivers. Looks like we have Xcode over here. Uh, the calculator, Discord. Interesting. Does that come pre-installed or is that? Um, I have to go and install it, and it's kind of an advertisement. Interesting. Okay, well, it's not really loading up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, download. Interesting. Yeah, oh, yeah, it says Ubuntu here. Interesting. So, I guess it's not really installed, because I said I had to download it. But it is interesting. It came with that. So, screenshot, system monitor. Okay. So... Um, let's see, we have, like, VLC Media Player, Image, let's see, we, we have quite a few third-party apps in here. That's something that comes to mind very easily. Like, we have Telegram, um, like, PDF, Presentation, Spreadsheets, Writer. And I did not really ask for any of this stuff either. Hmm. Okay. So, let's see, um... Software updates, where is the kind of app store I was looking at earlier? Because they did have its own app store, I believe. Let's see, launcher. Okay, so I have to go back to launcher. Okay. Um, and I keep accidentally clicking off it. If you click off, because see, here's the apps and search bar and then the uh, page manager. If you click here, it closes it. And that kind of annoys me. I mean, if it makes sense, if it closes, if you click over here, but no, if you click inside of it, it closes. That kind of annoys me. So let's go back to here. It should be somewhere here. Okay, so we have Spark Store. Is that what they're talking about? Let's see. I don't know, honestly, because again, we have like Thunderbird and then WPS. Cause WPS, is that like a kind of like a LibreOffice kind of thing? I mean, obviously, it's not going to have, like, Word and PowerPoint and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if it comes in its own little version, we got, like, LibreOffice. I've never heard of WPS before, so I'm not sure if it's, like, a like a house kind of thing that's dedicated for uh, Cutefish OS or it's its own kind of thing. So, Kate. What's Kate? Interesting. I don't know what some of these apps are, so let's just try Spark, Spark Store. Let's see what Spark Store is about. Oh, there's this down here as well. Packed and store. No, that's not it. Never mind. Interesting. Okay. Oh, if you click over here, you can actually kind of move it like this. Interesting. So let's see. I guess this is the app store. So it's weird because, or not weird, but it's half of this is, I want to say, in Japanese. So that. Is interesting. I can tell what a lot of this stuff is. Like, like of course, Qubit Torrent, Free Download Manager, Tor, of course, some basic applications in here that everyone can kind of tell what they are. You have Microsoft Edge, that I want to look into. Um, FileZilla, you know, you you have some VPNs and stuff in here. You have some apps I don't really know what they are, I assume. Maybe there's some sort of a, like a Japanese app that was kind of brought over. So that makes me wonder if this could be a good operating system for running foreign, more specifically Japanese applications on your main PC without having to go through a bunch of other software and pro, uh, programs on your host machine. This could potentially be very good for that, actually. Interesting. So and then we have wine here. Is that is that the wine I'm thinking of? Like where it's where it's like wine is not an emulator, which was that program you could get on Mac OS to run like certain Windows programs. Is that what I'm thinking of, or is this a totally different pr program? Okay, I want to look at this though. Microsoft Edge Dev. Okay, so is this like the actual Microsoft Edge download time? Eight hundred seventy six. Interesting. Okay. So we'll actually download. I guess we'll see because it's not seeming to be downloading at the moment. Okay, let's go back to chat here. Um, 
see we have some chat applications um qq interesting a bunch of different versions of qq by the looks of it see we have a bunch of error programs that are saying wine so i guess that's not the wine i'm thinking of the one that lets you run windows programs on um mac which is the one i've, I've used it before it um I believe that that's what it stands for when it's not an emulator because it's technically not an emulator and everyone thought it was an emulator. Anyway, so I'm just going through here. This was chat, right? And then music. Let's see what's in here. And we have Spotify. Apple Music? Interesting. So a question I have right off the bat, and maybe this is a stupid question. So, okay. Oh, um, this is actually installing. That's good. Five megs a second. 4.5 maybe second not going super fast um but it's installing that's good so we have microsoft edge on here we have apple music are these programs supposed to be on here or is does is apple okay with apple music being on a distro linux called cute visual s that is my question if i had to guess i would say no they somehow brought this over and made it work on here I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong and, you know, Microsoft can have Distro the Linux install uh, Edge. I don't know. It just kind of caught me off guard is all. So these are some of your music apps, I guess, is what they said. But you have, like, Audacity, which is, uh, which records audio. So, let's see. Apple Music. Interesting. I don't know. Do I want to try it? I kind of want to try it. Let's try it. So... Then we have video here. VLC, of course, wouldn't surprise me if there were a few more versions of VLC in here. OBS Studio, I believe that's TikTok in here. And what else is in here? Next player. You have, I can't tell what some of these are. You have OpenShot. That is a video editor, I believe. OpenShot. But it's like an open source video editor. Um, so Grid Player, Ideal Share, Video Go. Microsoft Edge has been just installing, so maybe we'll check that out in a little bit. So, okay, so for picture, we have... Okay, so we have some classics in here. Okay, we have Photoshop, GIMP, another version of the GIMP. Blender, very popular. Uh, Krita, pretty popular. Okay, Libre Cat. Okay, so I believe that's from the same people that um, develop library office. So maybe that's on here. It probably would be an office. Okay. So I've noticed as well, the scrolling like does not work so well, which is kind of why I'm using the drag tool here. Room Ranger. So there are some interesting apps on here. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, we have Steam. Okay, I believe that's from Minecraft, but it, uh, I don't know what that is. What is this? What is this supposed to be? Is it like kind of like a Minecraft tool sort? I, I don't know what it, most of this stuff is. Interesting. Oh, is the Spark Store stopped working? Okay, I think Spark Store is officially given up. Okay, yeah, it does not seem to be working whatsoever. So... Okay, well, maybe that's the sign we need to go do something else. Okay, let's go here. Let's try U-Tools. Was that in here before? U-Tools? Am, am I crazy? Was U-Tools in here before? I guess it could have been. Okay, Microsoft Edge dev. So it's like a development version of Microsoft Edge that they brought over here. Yeah, we'll see if it loads. Uh, it seems to be taking its time. So let's see. Come back here, sparse or what if I go in right click and just try and force it shut? Oh, is the whole thing stopped working now? Oh no, it's actually working. Okay, here we go. Okay, welcome to my stuff to edge. Compatibility, performance, and more privacy controls. Okay, so it seems to be working in here. Inspirational. Informational. Focus. Inspiration. Yeah, I want to be focused today. Okay. So, 
Microsoft. Okay, so so we're taking a look here. Um, oh, and it did that. Okay, let's go back. The new Microsoft Edge is here. So I say this is like a real version of Microsoft Edge. Interesting. So will it work? Let's see. Jimmy Carter is currently trending, I guess. Interesting. Okay, so I guess it works. Um, so I'm browsing the web here, looking at because uh, Jimmy Carter is trending on Microsoft Bing. Um, I don't think he's dead yet, is he? Yeah, because I know he was. Uh, it doesn't say he was dead. Because I know he was in hospice for a while. He's been in hospice for a while now. Um, yeah, interesting. So yeah, it works here. Don't want to see Jimmy Carter go though. Um, but I guess that's a cycle of life, as they say. So, okay, let's come back here. Close two windows. Spark store, close. Okay. I click close two windows. I guess they didn't both want to close. Okay, let's try Apple Music. I don't know what's going on here with Apple Music. Okay, yeah, well, Apple Music will probably take its time. But it is good to see that the web browser release works. I didn't try Firefox yet. Firefox, I would imagine, works just fine. I would hope it works just fine. Um, and yeah, shouldn't have any problems there. So we have terminals on. That's pinned to like the dock. I'm not sure if this would refer to as the dock. Let's see. Okay, so settings works. Yeah, wired connection, because I'm using a virtual machine. Proxy, nothing going there, nothing going in Bluetooth at the moment. Display should be, yep, that makes sense. Like dark, I've did done dark mode, which eh, defaults dark mode, that's not a bad choice, I guess. Ba other backgrounds you can choose from here. Let's see, let's take a look at that one. Yeah, I guess we can't take a look at that one. That's fine. Okay, so this does refer to it as the dock, okay. So you kind of took that one from Mac OS. Oh, the new wallpaper loaded. Okay, so let's see, user, me, notifications, sound, what else is in here? And then just kind of basic settings. Okay, so Apple Music is not going to work? Interesting. I guess it won't, maybe. Let's go back. Okay, wine. Okay, is this the wine the okay it says windows here is this the wine i'm thinking of the emulator or no not the emulator it's not an emulator my bad it lets you run windows on i guess you could do windows on linux here um okay let's go back to game so we, we looked at this here and then the app kind of broke so open ra okay so there are some kind of classic games in here not classic games but some more well-known games I believe that's a PSP emulator, no? And then we have, like, Super Text Card, I believe that is. Minecraft, apparently. Yeah. Okay, will the scroll work? Not really. CMU is in here. Open TTD is in here. That's a good game. So open RCT2 in here as well, or no? Okay, and see open RCT2, maybe in mind. Um, let's go to Office. I want to know what's in here. So, so we have the WPS stuff in here, right? And then like Microsoft Office 2013 to do, like there's just weird combinations of apps in here. Okay, I'm looking for LibreOffice. I don't see it, at least not yet. Okay, interesting. So there's rating in here as well. Um, so I guess some sort of rating apps are in here. And then we have, let's see, development, PyCharm, you know, uh, which is for, I, I used PyCharm, um, and that's for Python. 
uh, Sublime Text, Visual Studio Code, let's see. So you guys can make programming apps and like game development, software development kind of things. Arduino in here as well. Uh, Godot, Atom. Some, quite a few apps in here I recognize. Okay. Interesting. And then some, I guess, a little more obscure ones I haven't seen before. Interesting. Tool? What's in Tool? Okay, so this is the line from earlier. Keep seeing it in some sort in here. I have no idea like what some of this air stuff is or what it's supposed to do. Yeah, okay, VirtualBox is in here. Interesting. It looks like an old version of VirtualBox though, right? Or an older version of VirtualBox. Boost changer? Like, what, is that like an overclock kind of thing? Or... 360 looks like some sort of antivirus potentially. WinRAR, uh, yeah, that makes sense. And another version of Wine apparently up here. Arch Linux of the sorts. I... Wifty, and then it has like the Touch ID logo. Dude, you could probably spend hours here just installing this different software and seeing what it is. Okay, more theme here. I guess this themes your brings some certain way. Because we have like a Windows one and then a Mac one in here. So I guess if you get that, it'll make it look more like Windows. Interesting. Yeah, tr let's try that. Download that. I want to try that. And then other, which is just like random other Windows 95. Okay. God, what is this? I gotta download that. Ha uh, Macintosh System 8. Is this like themes as well? Like, what is some of this stuff? Or is it like an app that you open it up and it's like a version of Mac OS? Interesting. Yeah, there's some interesting apps in here. So. I guess the kind of conclusion. Oh, so let's choose the app you want to upgrade. Oh, that's what this is. App upgrade. Okay. No, no, no. Let's not do that. Okay. Well, that did not want to work there. Okay. Is the store officially broken? Probably has again. Have has anything we done sold yet? Not quite yet. Okay, so I'm getting interesting first impressions from this operating system, definitely. Does it not want to work? Because I can't click anything over here again, because this happened before. Yeah, so I guess not. Let's try and see if we can at least close it. Do it three times. Um, okay, so yes, it's not responding. Just terminate it. So I assume we did not get anything. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. Okay, so honestly, the, I, I got really mixed first impressions from this operating system. I will say right off the bat, I do not... Well, I, I like the concept of this operating system. I think there's a lot of potential here especially is something that you can run more foreign software in without having to do anything in your host machine. I think there's a lot of potential for that here. I do not think it is super simple and easy to use, though. Um, it's pretty buggy in my experience so far. Um, it does seem like there's quite a bit of bloatware on it right off the bat as well. Um, the App Store, I'm not really a big fan of. Um, I, I'm fine with the App Store having it, but maybe in conjunction with another App Store. Maybe like the standard Ubuntu App Store. Because this is built on Ubuntu and you could easily put all stuff in here. I mean, our Ubuntu logo is hidden all over. But, honestly, if unless you're looking for something very specific, I might go ahead and skip this operating system if you're considering installing it on your host machine because you want a more simple, a streamlined experience. Right now, it seems a little buggy. It seems like it has some problems. It does seem like it has a lot of potential, though, especially with what I just said. So I would give this operating system some time. 
this is not a thorough review. This is just my first impressions. But from what I could see, I would hold off on this operating system unless you're looking for something specific uh, for a while. But maybe it'll be fixed in the future. Maybe I could take another look at it at some point in the future. But right now, it just seems like it has too many problems. It's not streamlined, easy to use as it sounds like. But I do, again, do feel like there's some potential here. Would like to see it get better. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, this video uh, took has taken a lot more time than I thought it would because the installation took a lot longer than I thought it would as well. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed looking at this installation. Um, it is interesting. I will say that much. It is very interesting. And I would like to see what happens with it in the future. But again, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. I enjoy reading your guys' comments. And with that being said, Tech Cubed over and out.